Hi folks, good evening and welcome to a special edition of An Hour with Bob. And it's special because I have a friend on the show today, or tonight, we'll call it tonight, because usually I tape at night, but I'm taping in the daytime because we just moved to the new studio here on 88 Boyd Avenue in East Providence. And I don't have a whole crew yet because of the pandemic. Uh, I lost my whole crew, so I'm looking for a crew if you ever want to work on a TV show and learn about uh, how to run a camera, how to be a director, how to run sound, any of that stuff, and you want to be part of the show, you can email me at ventbob at gmail.com. That's vent, V-N-T, B-O-B, at gmail.com. Anyway, it's a special day because I have a friend on here on the show today. Unfortunately, it's not for a real good reason, at least part of it isn't. He's, been, he's well known to everybody in Rhode Island. And he's had a TV show for many, many years. Good, uh, it's a sports show. As soon as I introduce him, you've got to know who he is. And that's Billy Vigian, better known as Billy V. How you doing, Bill? Hey, Bobby. It's been too long, man. In many years. Many, many years. Many years of friendship. Many years. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. And I, again, I, as I pointed out, it's not for a good reason. As I found out, you've got physical problems all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, you talk about four years ago, I got hit, I got blindsided, actually. What happened was I was going to have my two knees replaced. Right. And at that point in time, I said, before I do that, I had a little spot on my pancreas. I said to the doctors, do an MRI just to be safe. They said, nah, you don't need it. Your blood work is good. Your liver right. enzymes are great. I said, no, do the MRI. What do you mean a spot? What do we I mean? had like a spot, a little, a little a a growth, a growth on my, my, my pancreas. So they, they thought nothing of it because it was so small. So what happened was I forced them to do it. Give me an MRI, and sure enough, it came back. I had three spots on my liver. Now what that meant, they had to go in and biopsy him. Oh, that so, must have scared the daylights out of you. Of course, you know, scared is not the word. Uh, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't rest, but I had to have the biopsy done. And sure enough, the biopsies, once they did, they came back cancerous. I, now, my whole world came to a sudden stop. And I said, okay, what do we got to do? Well, they got to cut you open. They cut me open from here to all the way down and across here to cut me open to take the cancer out. I, unfortunately, not ever experienced this. Um, thought it was just going to be one easy thing. Cut, right, cut sure. it out, it'll be good. Cut it out, you're done. Unfortunately, there's one cancer in the liver. That's where they worked on that is very, very, that is, uh, it's terminal and very detrimental, it's deadly. And uh, don't you think I get that cancer? I get what they call a cholangiocarcinoma. Say what, it again? A cholangiocarcinoma, it's in, within the bile duct. So what that means is that within your system of your liver system, you have molecules going right. as far as in and creating as far as tumors, and then the other tumor they gave me chemo for right. goes in to kill them. So I'm like on a hamster wheel, killing them, growing them, killing them, growing them, killing them, growing them. And sadly enough, I after so many, so many days of research uh, and seeing so many doctors, they said, what's the story? And they told me, listen, it's terminal. And at the same time, what do you mean it's terminal? Yeah, there's, there's no cure for it. Oh, God. I said, what? And then on top of it, I went to a doctor down in um, Baltimore. And he said, listen, Billy, this can be treatable. But, but. at the same time, it, you know I mean, uh, you need to understand the treatable is one thing, but curable is another. Right. So with that understood, at least I could stay alive. Sure. Instead of, and that, that's a hard thing to do because all of a sudden my whole life blew up. I guess. I didn't know what to do, where to go, how come, because next thing I know I'm on chemotherapy, I'm on a whole new program. I was cancer free for the first two months after my surgery. Next thing I know, uh, I thought I was cancer free. It came back, I had cancer in my bile duct. Right. Well, it's tough to believe, it's tough to take that. Tough to, I, I can't imagine. Listen, it's, it's like, I still can't believe it, Bob. I still can't believe it because you know, you hear people say, well, you look great, you look good. Right. You know, but the thing is, it's on the inside, it's not on the outside. Right. So people are trying to be nice. But I will tell you this, 
that my whole life came to a standstill, it blew up. As you know, I'm involved in many different things. I would do my weekly TV show or radio show. At the time, it was a TV show, and I worked with all my legends, and then I had my sports marketing company. Yep. And I fought good sports and entertainment, which I would represent a lot of athletes. And then I would hold my own special events in different times and different places for charities. And then on top of all of that, um, my life, I, my, just, my, just to live a life of being, not even thinking about cancer was gone. So what happened was, Bobby, about four months ago, because what happens is you become a guinea pig. Right. Yeah, they're you know poking, I mean? All they're doing is they're, they're tr it's a trial and error process. Yep. Okay, which I'll tell you what happened to me yesterday. It's just, just yesterday. They put you on a chemo regimen. I have a quart in my neck. Yep. And then I used to take six chemo pills a day, which is tough. Just to be able to be able to factor that and put in your head and think straight and a little quality of life is tough. But six months, actually almost five months ago, they gave me a new chemo because the other chemo wasn't working. Right. What happened was it backfired. The next thing I think, I woke up in the middle of the night with 103 temperature. My whole body was completely like a red color. Next thing I knew, I ended up in the hospital. I don't remember any of this. And at the same time, what happened was, next thing I know, is that I had liver failure, and as oh, far God. as I had failure, as far as brain failure, and I had heart failure. They had, the, the, thank God I was able to have an advocate there because I couldn't talk for myself because I was unconscious. I don't know where wow. I was or what I was doing. And uh, they asked me, Billy, uh, Mr. Vigian, we're going to paddle your heart because your heart rate is so low. Right. But we need you to realize this because 50% of people die that we do this Holy to. Holy good God. Good thing I wasn't in my right frame of mind. Yeah, you would have said, forget it. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm not taking the shot. But right. at that point, I'm yelling, I want to live. I want to live. So they did it. And I finally came through. In three days of my life, I lost total understanding where I was. It was like I wasn't even here. And then I spent six more days in the hospital to just get myself back to being normal because that chemo almost washed my whole brain out. Like as far as my memory, I couldn't remember stuff. I didn't right. know what day it was. And that was horrifying. I'll bet. So you say that's horrifying enough to live through that. I said, okay, what's my prognosis from this point? They say to me, Mr. Vision, we give you 10 days to live. Are you kidding me? 10 days. I went, wait a minute, time out, time out. Holy good First God. of all, my daughter's sitting right there. You can't do that to me. No, no. And. Take your time. You're talking to the wrong guy. It's not gonna happen. So with that being said, I made up my mind that I'm proving them all wrong. Yep. You Fortunately, yeah. I was working on an autobiography which called Legendary Speaking, which you have right. a copy of. Right here. Which is not the actual book, but it's the actual book cover. Right. And that's going to tell the, tell the story of my life from beginning to end, from the ups to the downs to growing up, to actually getting involved in the business with the radio, television, and then also my acting career to my life today. Yep. So we, we said we're going to work on that. Then we're also going to work on a scrapbook, a scrapbook of a collection of all pictures of me when I was a kid to when I was younger, all the way down to all the celebrities behind the scenes, what goes on. So I'm excited about that. And then I formulated a foundation called the Billy V Scholarship Foundation yep. at LaSalle Academy because that's where I went to school. And I give them a lot of credit because I played football there, but they also gave me a lot of tools to be able to survive and to live by. And so I felt very indebted to them and I wanted to give something back yep. to where, give some kid a chance like I did. May need a little help with a scholarship, help them with that get them involved, let them give something back to the community and play sports. So we have all three of those things going. Then all of a yep. sudden, my author says to me, he says, let's have a great night. Let's put this all together and just blow it out. 
I said, you know something? That sounds great because that's all I did all my life was big things, big right. events. Yeah. You know, I've worked with some of the biggest athletes in the world. I've done some, I did some traveling. I've done some great events around the country. I said, it'd be great to come back home. And, but at the same time, it gave my mind something to think about sure. other than just laying down dying. So funny enough itself, we put together the Billy V. It's called the Celebrity um, Book Unveiling Bash on September 9th, coming up. Yep. That's going to be at the Rose of the Yep. At first, they thought we were going to have 200 people, Bob. Well, I must have did something right in life. Cause I heard 600 people. It's 600 people who are going to be a coming to this event, which is amazing because it's not all just the regular day people, which is, I'm very touched by the number of people that reached out to me and made donations to the foundation and that bought tickets and that are dying to come to this. But also, this bash is not a memoriam, it's not a testimonial, it's a celebration. Right. It's a celebration of life, of go. my life touching all these people's lives and enjoying make, putting one night to the side, forget about our pains, forget about our sorrows, forget about heartaches, forget about hostility, let's just have a great time. So Sounds good. It's going to be a bash and a half. I'm so excited about it because we have Jim McMahon, the two-time Super Bowl quarterback coming from in. From Chicago. From Chicago, which is like my brother. I've done things with him all around this country, and I've lived in the same house, slept in the same house. It, you know what I mean? Uh, he can't wait to be a part of this. And then on top of it, um, we also have some of the Sopranos coming. John Fiore from oh, the really? Sopranos. Yeah. yeah. He played Gigi. He died on the toilet. I'm in Garu. He gets stepped on by Tony G uh, Jimmy Gandolfini <laughs> as far as going to be there. So he got off the toilet then, right? Yeah, he finally made it off the toilet. Yeah. They, so he, uh, he they're going to be there, and I think Louis Tiant's going to be there. But I really didn't want to turn this into a sports theme. Right. I just brought that for a little flavor for the people because that was my life. Yeah. And that, that was my specialty, working with a lot of celebrities. So I just thought it would be nice to have them there. And then the, the night itself, when you come in the door, when you had a chance to buy a ticket at $100, you get the two books, right? plus you get dinner, plus you get entertainment. I tell you, we got entertainment. We got entertainment. We have a great DJ by you know, uh, Eddie Catoni. Oh, the fixer. Who's the fixer? The fixer. That's Eddie Catoni, the fixer. And then we got my man, which I'm excited about, Johnny Parada. He's going to be there doing a big show with yep. the other guys. The comedian, John. Big John. Oh, I love Johnny. Johnny's a big hot, big person, and he does a great show. So he's going to be there entertaining as well. And then we got Robert Black, as you know Robert. Very well. So as far as doing some songs and back and forth. And then I'm going to do a couple of antics nobody knows about, which I can't talk about to surprise everybody. Yeah. Because I like doing that. You know, my other couple of events... We did an event downtown Providence called Chillin' and Grillin'. I came in by gondola dressed like Julius Caesar <laughs> with, with, with all the celebrities. Everybody's looking for the celebrities come in by, you know, with limousine. I'm right. coming in by gondola. <laughs> and then we had another one called Lobsters and Mopsters. We came in shooting with the guns in the air yeah. as far as all the gangsters from all the different gangster films. So I like that a little flair, a little guesswork for people on their toes, you know, and make it entertaining. So this should be proved out to be one of the best nights well, wait a minute, you got water behind there, too, you know. You got the Patuxent River behind there. Yeah, but I can't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, do I, can, can I swing from the, the, the top of the roof? If I do that, I might, the roof might be untied, I may hurt myself. Yep. I can't parachute in. No. Nope. I can't take a boat in. I can drive in, maybe, if they'll let me take a car in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of thought process into this one, because you've got to be very different, very unique, and... So there's a, you know, a lot of brain power going into making this one a great night. Yep. So that's what's been going on, Bob. You know, you talk about my life as it was, free and unencumbered. Uh, How long ago did you start the uh, Billy V? Um, the foundation? Television. No, the television show. Oh, you're talking about... What year was it? That was almost 90, 91. Not there. I know it was around the same time that I did. Yeah, I started with Joe Caprio, believe it or not. Originally, you know Joe Caprio. Sure. You know, they got Judge Caprio show now syndicated. Yeah, brother, yeah. And uh, Joe and I started together. Cause I, did a, I did actually 10 world champions in one day. I interviewed Italian world champions, and one was Jake LaMotta. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so it was a great time. 
But, you know, I'll share something with you and your viewers because uh, it's pretty special. In my book, the scrapbook, when you open it up that night, I'm going to ask right. everybody to open it up the first page. And the first page is going to be a picture of Yogi Berra on the top, me interviewing him this way, that way, this way. There's going to be three pictures. And then there was a headline by the Providence Journal, Steve Krasner. He said, Billy V, a conduit to the legends. And then underneath is a picture of my grandfather, me and Yogi, because my grandfather surprised him that day by meeting Yogi. But what makes that special is they asked me who I, what I want to do, where I want to go at the show, where, what did I want to do in the future. Right. This was in 1994 now. As you read the article, which I'll read out loud, they asked me the question, what do I want to do for the future? Right. I said, I want to write a book. And I in want to 94, you said? 94. And I want to start a scholarship fund to help kids to go to school, participate in sports, and give something back to the community. Yep. So that night, they're going to hear me. Everybody's there. Please stand up. Look around this room right now at this exact moment. Because this exact moment, 22 years ago, I predicted this, and this is a dream that's coming true right here, and you're all a part of it. If you can believe that, I got it in black and white. The show, as far as that, I said that statement, and sure enough, I'm fulfilling that statement that night of the event. Wow. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, you know, it's just, it's been a whirlwind. You try to, you know, my life will never be the same. The phys physicalities, you know, what I got to tolerate, what I deal with. But I have to be honest with you, this event, you know, putting that many people together. Oh, it's got to build you up big time. Well, just as far as it took a lot out of me. You know, oh, I, well, to do it, to put yes. it together, absolutely. You know, working 16, 17 hour days. Yep. Yep. You know, my body hurt. I was tired. But I, I knew I had to do it because... Yep. I told the doctors, listen, there's either two things going to happen here. I'm going to die trying to get there, or I'm going to live it. It's the only two ways this is going. So I pray to God. September 9th. September 9th is going to happen. And uh, as I can see right now, we're going to have a bash. Yeah. For all you right. people out there, let me tell you something that don't understand. This is going to be a party that you will never forget in your lifetime. I'm sorry we're sold out. You know, it's a little late in that factor. But I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about it. You're going yep. to read a lot about it. And even more so, it's something that as far as that I'm proud to say that I did. And it's part of my legacy once again. So people remember that Billy V has been here, done that. And uh, God knows where he's BV too, by the way. Yes, sir. BV. Yes, sir. <laughs> that means the same initials, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. But we had a lot of fun, Bobby, through the years. A lot of fun. Yeah, I you've met some interesting people. You've interviewed a lot of interesting people. I interviewed over 350 people. We counted them. My next goal is to count how many rings, world championship rings, you know, because we started fooling around because I did Bill Russell. When right. I interviewed Bill Russell, he had 11 world championships. Wow. And when I did Yogi Berra, he had 10. So now oh, the that's 21. That's 21 right there. And then McMahon. And McMahon, he's got two. Right. But the thing is, if I went all the way down, all the people. Right. How about boxing? <clears throat> yeah, forget about that. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. It could be over 1,100, which could be f kind of funny. A great trivia question someday. So, you know, uh, but right now I'm inundated with making this work, making this happen, because there is a lot of factors to this. Uh, but I will tell you this. For you people come, come dressed to impress because you're going to have a great time. Jim McMahon, I can't say enough about him. He, yeah. lo he loves people. People love him. You know, uh, for you people that, you know, uh, I know you're a uh, Patriot fans, and he kicked the shit out of us back <laughs> in 1987. Yeah. But, you know, for all you people out there, I want to explain something to you. I'm a local kid. I'm an ordinary kid that did extraordinary things. And I will tell you, if you think about it, in 1986, when the Super Bowl was going on, I was sitting on the third floor apartment on Viola Street. In Providence. In Providence, with my wife to be at the time, yep. watching the Super Bowl. Who would ever believe in 1986, after he beat the Patriots, 
that in 1995 I would meet him, interview him, and that we'd be become good like friends. brothers yep. all these years later. Okay? That's another one, like as far as Dick Buckus. But that was my childhood idol. I used to wear his number 51. 51. Playing football. Whatever I could do, I carried his trading card. I loved Dick. The way he played the sport, the way he played the game, he was an animal. He was my kind of guy. Yeah. But who would ever believe, not only would I get a chance to interview him for radio and television, but not only that, that he would eventually get to know me, and then he would work for me, and I would sign his check. Really? Come on. I swear to God. Really? I swear to God. Honest to God. He works for me. You know, doing different events that I may do, from golf events to football events to whatever it may be. So what I'm trying to tell you is nothing is impossible. The difference is how bad you want it. Yep. That's the only difference. Yep. True. Very you know I mean? true. And, I'm, and that's what this book is all about. It's an inspirational book that talks about my good, my bad, my ugly, but also how I made it through all of that to make what I did in life out of myself and uh, un unguided. You know, if I went through New England Tech and I went to school there and to broadcast, they give me a broadcasting plaque. Right. Right? They say, okay, you can now broadcast, you can now do interviews. But the question is, Bob, nobody gives you the equation how to get to Yogi Berra. Right. Yeah, exactly. To interview Yogi Berra. Right, yeah. Or, or Bill anybody Russell. Else. Yeah, exactly. Like Bill Russell, when he came here, he gave you all the news channels, three minutes, five minutes, four minutes. That was all he gave them. Right. Sound bites. But he gave me 49 minutes, and I won a national award with him. Yep. So they don't tell you how to do that. Exactly, yeah. So in this book itself, it touches upon some of the ways I had to do and get to where I had to be and get to the people I had to be to make my show interesting enough and make it equate enough for people to remember. So I'm very proud of that. We've done what we were supposed to do. I've done what the biggest that I could ever ask for in my lifetime. And at the same time, I made some great relationships. What else can I ask for? Yeah, that have lasted. Of course. Yeah. Of course. That have lasted over the years, over the decades, actually. Well, you got to remember, Bob, our friendship goes way back. You know what I mean? And, you know, you, you, with times like this, you know, okay, just getting the word out is one thing. But, you know, you, you, when you reach out and say, listen, I want to help you, you know who your friends are right. real quick when you're sick. Oh, yeah. You forget, everybody else forgets, you know, as far as uh, that you're sick or that you're fighting or struggling. And I can't tell you how many people I get a calls a day that say, listen, can I help you? Did you sleep okay last night? Do you need anything? That's a beautiful thing. Yep. When you see that human side approach come out. But I don't look for anything from anybody. I just want everybody to be happy and uh, just have a great time in life. And, but I will tell you this, September 9th is the time. September 9th. And John Parada is going to be there. <laughs> Watch out. You don't know what's going to happen crazy, with him. Crazy John, huh? Crazy John's on the show right here. He says, how do you do that one? Bob, oh, yeah. Bob, I couldn't tell you how you did that one. That was pretty cool. Yep, yep. I must tell you, both in the same day. You had the Daily Double. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's at, he's at your event on the night. He's going to be right? there, oh, of course. And he's bringing, I think he's coming with a couple other guys. Three guys, three, three other, other guys. guys yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to rock the house. Yep, yep. Are you kidding? He's scared shit. I got 600 people coming at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's been, he's been with some big, big groups, too. Oh, yeah. Know. He's played before a couple big houses in his time. Absolutely. Yeah. He, I like him. He's, he's hilarious. He's, I told him, I did a little Tuesday. I don't drink no more. I can't have any more drinks or nothing. If I, at least if I drink, I would get up there and try comedy. So I have to be naturally comedic. Right? I, right. I, I take pills. <laughs> <laughs> and legally. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But. So what, what happened when you, the night you found out, the day you found out, that, I mean, that had to be the most depressing and the most difficult thing to deal with. It was New Year's Eve, Bob. It, huh? Really? It was, uh, New Year's Eve. I'll never forget it. Oh, I'm sure you won't. I, my went, God. I went to get my results at a tobacco store. They didn't have a fax. And they sent that to me. And they I read, sent it to the, pack, to, to the tobacco, tobacco store because I wanted it. Holy good God. And they gave me the results, and I says, I can remember laying in bed. I bought a bottle of champagne, 
and you started drinking the champagne and watching the, the festivities for New Year's sure. Eve, which I really wasn't there, and I just couldn't believe my life has just come to a stand wow. total, total standstill. So that was a lot, and I'm going to tell you right now, and I pray for every one of you people out there that have cancer and that are struggling because to have cancer, I'm a strong guy, I'm a big guy, but it takes a big guy to deal with this. And you need to be strong because it will kick your ass like no other. You gotta put your mind over matter because if not, if you lay down, it's gonna take you up, eat you up, and spit and, you and up. And you'll be done very soon. Very. If you don't. Very, and that's why this, right? this night is a blessing to me. It gave me a chance to focus on something and gave me a chance to be able to do what I love to do best. You know, even though I struggle with certain aspects, you know, like the memory part sometimes, and, and then other times as far as dealing with uh, just going out and selling tickets and working 17 hour days. But, you know, I have that old football mentality, no pain, no gain. Right. So bring it, you know, I'm only mortal. It's only mortal pain. See, I learned in life, when I had to do wells, and probably distributions, I had to give away everything I own. And as you know, I own Rolls Royce and cut nice toys and all that bullshit. But the most important thing, Bob, in life, the most important thing in life that you're gonna take with you, and that you're gonna leave here, is the time you share with the people you care and love about most. Right. That's your wealth. That's it, it's your wealth. You ain't taking nothing else. I ain't taking none of my jewelry. I'm not taking none of my cars. I'm taking one thing, those memories. Yep. And that's why I did this event. So if I die, you'll always remember me. And at the same time, that's why I created that foundation. So when they look to that, they know what I was all about. I didn't just come pass through here like some guys are born. I feel bad for you people that are born and you never do anything, and you just come through life, do nothing, and then die. Right. And nobody has ever known you've ever been here. And that's where, as far as I appreciate you, you've done the same thing I have. You, people, everybody you go knows who you are. You, you did something. You made your mark, you made your impression. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's why I love people like that, of like-mindedness. Because people like us just don't come along every day. They You're just, right. They just don't. Absolutely. They're gifts. So, thank you so much. Well, I'm glad I could help you a little bit. I mean, just by having you on here, is, uh, I'm, I'm so glad I did because the, the, I, I was shocked to find out that you were sick. Like, you were, last I knew you were doing, you were acting, you were in movies. Please, uh, you know, that's another story, another life. You know, I worked with guys like Denzel Washington, Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale. You know, my life has been a charmed life. You know, just to do a scene with Christian Bale and the fighter, and the guy wins an Academy Award for the same movie, is like working with Charleston Heston. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at the same time, God gave me that opportunity. You yep, know, I'm very yep. blessed to have that. And, you know, so, I believe and I made a deal with God. I said, Father, if you're gonna make me suffer like this, maybe you want me to be a martyr. Maybe you want me, because I have a, such a huge platform, people listen to what I got to say. I'll help them. I'll share with them. I'll care for them. I'll, I'll turn your word over to them. And maybe they can find some comfort with you. But let me live. Let me live. Right every day for my kids. Two beautiful kids. Yes. Victoria and John. They're my life. And that's why I fight. Not for any other reason. I get it. They're my heart. Yep. yep. And that's why, you know, you talk about my son's getting ready to go into Afghanistan, and he can't be at this event, but my daughter will be there, and she'll get to live and see what her father's all about. And I don't even think she's ready to know what, you know, like to see what 600 people coming out for me is all about. Yeah. 
but uh, I'm just proud if I could make her proud. Well, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Absolutely. September 9th. September 9th, Rose in the Patuxet. All right. Dressed to impress. <laughs> and all I can tell you, <laughs> just get ready to party <laughs> because we're going to have one big party, buddy. All right. Sounds good to me. Listen, thank you so much for having me on, Bob. And it's great You're seeing you man, once buddy. again, man. You've been the man for years. I just want you to know that, brother. Okay. I yes. love you, buddy. We'll be right back, folks. Hey, we're back on an hour with Bob, and we got two jokers here tonight. We got John Parada and Russ Gelfuso here. Wait a minute, they're joining us tonight. There they there are. We are. There they are, they're back. We're conjoined. That's Russ Gelfuso over there in the end. How you doing, Russ? Good, Bob. Always a pleasure. And this is John Ferrara. How you doing, John? The king of comedy in Rhode Island. The king. I'm not the king. The king. Listen, you are the king. A, I do comedy, and Russ does comedy. He's one of the Cruise Brothers. Yeah. Right? One of the my, Cruise Brothers. One of the Cruise Brothers. Well, that's a joke in itself. I was just going to say, <laughs> try selling cruises right now. There's nothing funnier. <laughs> nothing funny about Maybe that. Maybe you should start no. a cab company, Red, Russ. Something. Well, <laughs> think about the cruises. I, I mean, it's like... Almost. Uh, it's almost going, and it's gonna almost stop, and who knows? My God, it got it's crazy. Decimated last year, the right? The whole thing. But you know, we could. Ha it could happen again. It could happen yes, again exactly. soon. And it sounds like. Can not. you imagine somebody actually take taking? Uh, was it? Um, I can't think of the cruise car. Holland America. They took Holland America to court to try to stop them from making it mandatory to uh, have been. Vaccinated. Vaccinated to yeah. go on a cruise. Yeah. Can you imagine somebody wanting to take them to court to stop them right. from being vaccinated? Who has that kind of time? What, yeah, but, I mean, why would you want to do that? Exactly. Thank God the judge ruled in favor of... How in uh, America. How in America. Yeah. And not make them say, oh, you got to keep... you got to let people come on even if they're not vaccinated and they could be sick or whatever and they could right. destroy everybody. Right. I've never been on a cruise, Bob. You've never been on a cruise? I've been on a paddle boat to Roger Williams really? Park. Really? Right around the water. But can you never, imagine him that's on That's as a, close as I've come to... Can you imagine John on a 10-day cruise? I think... I can't. Yeah, I think... I gain about 50 pounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. I'd be You're getting another person if you were on a cruise for 10 days. Uh, I'd be in trouble. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all oh, no, the cruises were the best. I always thought they were the best. The best form of vacation, I think. I was in the Navy. That's why I got these Yankees. I saw the ship, but I got the Yankees. So really? I was in the Navy. In you were in the 76 Navy? 76 to 80. I went to 25 countries. That was my wow. cruise. Wow. Went all wow. over the yeah, world. Yeah, but those, those ships go like yeah, this. They kind of, yeah. Because they're, they're, they're like when this. We were in the North Atlantic. I remember laying on my bed and, and just holding on. We were the oh. bed. Was, we were in a big storm <laughs> in the North Atlantic. It was crazy. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, my yeah, God. Scared. What kind scared. of ship? I was on a destroyer. Yeah. Uh, USS Arthur W. Radford. I was on the USS Savannah. I was an oiler, and then I went on the Radford. I was a radar operator, Bob. I used to sit on the radar oh, scope. And go like this. Yeah, <laughs> go like that. Yeah. We used to play that song, Radar Love, by uh, Golden Earring. Yes, That's a great Golden song. Earring. That would come out. We'd be playing it while we're sitting on the radar scope. Oh, yeah? That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I understand you've got to be at the event on the 9th. Yeah, Billy, Billy, Billy V event. Foundation. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to, to be a part of it. I, how it happened, I actually... You know, told Billy, I'd like to do, you know, donate a comedy night. Let's have a comedy night for your foundation. And that's how it was. And then Billy said, well, why don't I make you a part of this event I'm having, which, right. which I w didn't even think of. I just said, I want to just have a straight comedy night, you know, sure. do like an hour and a half show, get some comedians to come in. Next thing I know, we're part of the, the scholarship foundation, the big night at Rhodes on the Patuxent. So it's very, very exciting. I got Chris Tab from Boston, excellent comedian. The Prince of Mystery does a comedy magic act myself. We got, we got a great hour show. It's going to be one hour show. Oh, uh, Russ is going to be in the parking lot with a walkie talkie. That's right. <laughs> Throwing things up at the window. <laughs> I'll, come in, I'll bring my bucket truck. We'll get in cheap. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Have, have you seen The Prince of, of uh, Mystery or Prince of Darkness? Prince of Mystery. Mystery. Prince, Prince Absolute Skip, hilarious. Skip Daniels. He does a comedy match. He's really good. He no, wait a minute. Was he at. One of the events in Warwick before, no? I think he came to Knights of Columbus. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, he's been, not that night you were there. You probably no, seen no, him. No, no, I've seen him. I've, I oh, think I've seen him. him. Okay, he's I really, really seen. He is funny. He is, he is yes. a funny guy. Yeah, yeah he does He does uh, tricks and he does yeah. Yeah, comedy yeah. at the same illusion. time. Illusion. Yeah, yeah. Huh? The illusion. The illusion. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Good. Yeah. Very good. Now, how many comedy shows do you do a year? Wow, the COVID stopped me dead on my tracks like everybody else, you know, and then... Yep. 
as we started coming out of it, I had to start planning for the fall. And I, before before the COVID, I mean, was, I, I retired uh, three and a half years ago. I was really amped up. We were doing a lot of shows. Right. And then the COVID hit. How many of you have done in a night? I've seen this guy. I'm at one show, and he. I said, oh, is John coming? Yeah, he's at this other show, and then he's going to another show. And then he was working as a guard. At the ACI. Correctional officer. Correctional officer. Right. Allegedly. <laughs> but I said, how the heck does this guy I'm do it? I'm out of there now, so you can say <laughs> You can that. say <laughs> So go ahead. That was an amazing. The most I ever did. I, five? I, I booked eight shows in one day. I did five of them myself. Oh, my God. I started it. I'm a good organizer. Like I can tell you, Bob, you're going to be at this club, 2 o'clock. It's a party. Be there with the sound. I'll be in at 2.30. Right. I go on. I leave there. I go rush at another place. I go on. I leave there. I, I did five in one night. Well, I started in the afternoon. and went all the way through. Unbelievable. Bachelor party, a club, whatever. I, I, I don't do that now. Now, now one or two. Slower, yeah, slower. one or two. Uh, two at the most. I, I try not to run all the... Before I would take it, if I was on somewhere at 8 and you called me for a party at 6 and then Russ called me for a party at 10, I would do everything. I'd run all over the He knows I'd run all over the place. Incredible. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm, I'm 63 now. It's time to cool. I gotta pace myself. i got to pace myself. You know? Well, yeah, yeah, you get a little slower when you get yeah, a little older. You know? slow down a little bit. But I enjoy uh, Russ. Russ gets up for us to the Comedy Factory. We enjoy, we have a good time putting the shows together and everybody gets... Uh, on stage, Russ, Russ has had a lot of fun. He's, he's done oh, yeah, stuff yeah. for me through the years, and we, we enjoy it. But, yeah, Russ is enjoy. actually funnier to work with. Yeah. He's even funnier to work with when, when he's out. You know, how many times have I told you to tell your stories? Well, but I have to memorize them, and memorizing them, and I'll tell you, the first time I went up, John, I, Dave DiLorenzo introduced me to John. I had, I, I never had any any training or anything, and I found out, okay, you have to time it. But I found out, like, the day after I went up. I showed up. <laughs> I must have had a, it looked like a phone book. And even um, <laughs> the, the other guys were watching me in the green room of the comedy connection. And they're laughing. And the guy's like, what's that for? Right. And I said, it's what I'm going to remember. You got five <laughs> minutes. You couldn't read that thing in five right, minutes, yeah, never yeah, mind. Yeah. And he showed yeah, more me. Peace. And the other thing is I kept changing the act, kept changing it and changing it. How could I possibly remember it? Right. And he said, you've got to do the same ones. It, there is such a science about it that I have learned over the years. And then there was another guy, a young kid, came in. He was going every night. I don't know. I know he lived in Connecticut. And I said, oh, wh where are you going? He, he said, I go everywhere. I don't care where it is. I go out every single night. Probably get better and better and better. And he was a along. young kid. Yep. And um, Some guys really chase it. They really, yeah. They really chase it. And he said, so I went up, and he was waiting to go up. And he said, do you mind a little Advice. criticism? And I said, no, not at all. You obviously are out there doing it. You don't wait for people to finish laughing. You have good lines but they're still laughing, right? and you're stepping over the laughs with the opening line for the next part, and they don't hear it. And I said, well, that's because I got so much. And he's yeah. like, what's yeah. the rush? No, you got to, you know, you got to just. You got to know when to pause. You exactly. Gotta learn. Well, if you want to save it laughter anyway. Yeah. Right, because they wouldn't hear the first part, and if that. If they're laughing, you don't want to start the next joke. You gotta, you gotta let them finish laughing, and then start the next. Joke. And there was a kid, I never knew him, but I never forgot what he said. Yeah. Problem is when you say the line and nobody does laugh, then you're like, okay. <laughs> then you rush to the you next joke. Exactly. Then you want to get. Then to you the want to get. Like to the I was saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. But after being down for a year, right over a year, yeah, boy, it's hard. But it's hard coming back. The whole time we were down. No matter who I talked to, no matter where I was working, I'd, I'd mention something about doing, doing stand-up, and I would do the act for them. And that's right. how I stayed a little fresh. Yeah. I would always just tell my, right. do that's my cool. part. That's yeah, cool. it was the only way I could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was down for 17 months, but I stayed fresh. <laughs> there you go. Would you party yourself, Bob? <laughs> 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 no, I had many women say, you're fresh. <laughs> 
You got slapped a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 that never happened. That never <laughs> yeah, you know. No, I'm not a governor. Yeah, we don't want to yeah. get into I'm that. I'm not a governor. Boy, we don't want to go down that path. <laughs> Bob, before anything, I, I got to tell you, I got I to gotta mention this. I, I teamed up with Johnny Peasy, great Boston comedian, uh, Rock and Drew from the Rhode Island Comedy Hall of Fame, and we, we got some, these big Are shows. Are you talking about this? No, I'm talking about Bobby Collins. Big, talking about this. Big national headline of Bobby Collins coming in yep. September 26th, Warwick St. Knights of Columbus. I got uh, October 17th, The Legends of Boston Comedy, Lenny Clark, oh. Steve Sweeney, oh, wow. Don Gavin. Come uh, on. We got Tom Carter from America's Got Talent. I've been on, the low, he was yeah. a Rhode Island guy. He came in second, in, He's coming he? November 10th. He came in second to the dog hack. Tom Carter, great, hilarious comic. And November 14th, we got Lenny Clark and uh, Jimmy Schubert. From uh, last comic stand, we got some big uh, shows. Big we got name. Bobby Bajol, uh, the Rhode Island his own yeah. rapper. Terry. We got Terry, Terry McInerney, the attorney. He's getting inducted into the Rhode Island Comedy Hall of Fame November 13th. We got a big show. So we got we got a lot of big uh, things coming. The best thing is go to the website comedyfactoryri.com. Everything's listed there because there's too many. We do the Carriage Inn in North Kingstown. We do Pavon Park in Cranston. We do Savini's in Woonsocket. I got a show there with Steve Palumbo, great singer. I haven't singer. been there in a long time. Oh, it's beautiful. They, they did, yeah, they, they, I used to like their veal. Yeah, yeah they did it all. When I live up in one socket, I used to like their beautiful veal. Beautiful room upstairs, and uh, I got Steven Palumbo, if you know him, the great Who started, singer. He was on this show. His first time he was ever on, I think it was the first TV show he'd ever been on. Oh, no was kidding. When he was with twice. Yeah. To, when he started singing with the yeah. three of them. Yeah, we did, uh, yeah, he, we did a... Uh, about a year before COVID, we did Steve Palumbo, Rock and Joe Hebert, and myself. We call it Laps in Music, and it was a fabulous night. And yep. so we're doing it again September 24th at Savini. We got all kinds of Wait stuff. Wait a minute, September 24th? September 24th. So you got to go on the website. You know what day website. that is, right? What day is it? That's your a birthday? very, very important day. What is it? In the world. I think what it's his birthday? birthday. It's my birthday. It's your birthday. Well, yeah. you got to come, Bob. <laughs> I'll take care of you. you got to come to the show. Dinner, I get singing. Veal? I get Veal? Sing, <laughs> dinner, singing, comedy. We got Rush in the parking lot. That's right. The bucket truck. <laughs> yeah, with the truck. The to get some cake. Hey, yeah, we got everything. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you got to have the, 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 the bucket lip. truck there? We'll yeah. try. The other thing we got to plug, I got to plug. We got a, the six-week course, $200 oh. comedy course. Oh, it starts September 20th at Warwick. <laughs> Yep. Six weeks, and we and, and we get the students in the graduation show get on stage, and then we help them continue like I have helped Russell through the years. We get them stage time, and right. uh, and we've got 13 students right now. Really, that We're is hoping. so important for yeah. people to learn how to do it. Because I don't know how many times I've been in the in the green room at the Comedy Connection, and somebody's in there, and they had never gone up before, but he was nice enough to let them go up. Sure, and they have no idea. Like just just running into these people that do it all the time, all that stuff you eliminate. That you get on stage with confidence after these guys. Right. Yes. Colleen, show you. Colleen Galvin, Rock and Joe, even and myself. We, and we, all we, nice. Three yep. instructors, you know. Yeah, it's really something, boy. Especially somebody who doesn't have any confidence. I can oh, see. Oh God! And, and if you do have confidence and you and you skunk, right? You will lose right. your confidence after that. Yeah, you, the key is you got to keep getting up. Right. You got like That's Russ, the whole thing. I mean, I got up in 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 '91. Actually, 83, I got up at Periwinkle's in the arcade oh with Frank O'Donnell, Charlie yep. Hall. I did really, really well. I went oh, back okay. twice more and bombed. I said, the heck with that. I stopped yep. for eight years. Wow. Then I, then I went to a show at the Comedy Connection. This headline of Jonathan Katz from Boston was on. Hilarious. I'm sitting there. I, I got to try this one more time. I took Frank O'Donnell. I had a class at the Learning Connection in Providence at the yep. time. Oh, God. Took yeah. that. I got on stage. Did really well. Again, second time on stage, bombed. Now I'm saying, what do I do here? And then I, I learned you have to... Keep getting up, and you're gonna have your bad nights, good right. nights. Eventually, sure. you get more consistent. And then there's people like Russ. We can't. Uh, we can only do so much. About That's Russ. right. <laughs> Just, you know, Russ. Does, I find him hilarious. He does a great job. My buddy was living in Cleveland, and um, he said to me, "This is how I got involved in it, and, and even thought that it was possible for me." He was one of my best friends, absolutely hilarious human being, and he um, he said. Oh, I'm doing comedy now. I'm doing stand-up. And I said, no kidding. How the heck did you get into that? Like you had to have it in the blood or something. Right, yeah, yeah. And he said, I just went up and I started doing it. And that's when I ran into Dave DiLorenzo. Sure. And um, I don't know how the heck I ran into Dave, but he said, well, I know John Parada. 
And he said, he's my cousin. And I said, everybody's your cousin. Stop <laughs> with that. That's kind of true. Father. That was yeah. Dave. <laughs> and God bless him. And yeah, we miss Dave. Dave. But yeah. so my friend said, so I got in touch with Dave. He got in touch with John. And I said, all right, I'm going up. So I called my friend. He was living in New York at the time. And um, he said, I, um, what the hell did he say? I said, yeah, I'm going, I'm going up. I said, I got to see how I do. I'll, I'll tape it and I'll send it to you. And he was quiet. And I said, what? He said, I got to tell you something. What? I didn't real, I'm not really doing stand up. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, so he was, he was, he lied to me. He just was kidding around as usual. So I said, well, that's good. Cause now I, I'm in a comedy show. But, <laughs> because so, of you. Yeah. So he ended up, he was, he went to Cleveland for some reason. And on Wednesday night, oh, that's what it was. He went in and he had a, you know, he had a little set that he did. And he went up to the, uh, the club owner and he, he was all proud. And he said, I did pretty good, huh? And the guy goes, you were all right. He goes, I was all right. Those people were laughing. They were slapping their knee. What are you talking about? He said, buddy, that's Wednesday night is Amish night in Cleveland. <laughs> no he way. said they either go to the mall and they watch people and they're just people watch and they're laughing like crazy. Right. Or they go to a show anywhere. They'll go into an old disco. They'll go anywhere and they're laughing hysterically. He said, they weren't laughing at me. He said, didn't you notice they were laughing before you went on the stage? They were laughing while you were on the stage, and they're still laughing, and you're off the stage. There's nobody on the stage. And he goes, you know what? You're right. And well, I that's never what you want to fill that. the studio with. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. You want to you fill the audience with those people. But right? the best people on the planet are comics. They really are. I yeah. mean, they bring laughter to the whole room. Right. Yeah. They They love each other. You never hear about a riot with comics. Never. Not yet anyway. Right, you right. know, it's like, oh God, the comics are coming. Hide your money or, you know, yeah. hide your kids. <laughs> when, when, when I, I have not seen in at least the last couple of years, anybody in um, hecklers. I've never seen a heckler. Yeah, you, well, you get them. You get them sometimes. Some, some cr crowds are Nice, and then you get other crowds where you might get a table where they're all talking and oh, maybe yeah, somebody's that's, heckling you. Oh, that's terrible when they yeah, talk. Yeah, it, right? it happens. You have your nights. Uh, I told you the story before, Bob. I did a bachelor party. I used to do a lot of bachelor parties. Oh, those are dangerous, comedy. though. Well, I, I never had... This is what happened to me. Now, I worked at the prison 36 years. People say you were at the... The worst thing that ever happened to me, I'm at that bachelor party performing. I, I was relatively new. This is years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm working the audience. Right? This biker comes up to me. He's about seven foot tall. He grabs me. I weighed 250 <laughs> at the time. He had me up in the air. I'm at the Edgewood Yacht Club. He's going over to the window. I can't swim. <laughs> I was I was in the Navy. You think I could swim? I got anchors. I can't swim. Now I'm up in the no, air. I'm still trying there. to tell jokes. The guy's got me up in the air. I'm, I'm saying to myself, he's going to throw me in the water. I'm going to drown. I'm going to die doing comedy. <laughs> That's what I really thought. I said, I'm going to die. I'm going to go in the water. He said, he can swim. Nobody's going to come out. I'm going to be in the water in the pitch black. And that, that's the end that's of my it. life. Yep, yep. And luckily, he put me down. Everybody's laughing. The joke was on me. But that was one of the scariest things <laughs> wow. that ever happened in my life. Really? In my life. Yeah. yeah. Not, and comedy. And comedy. I'm telling wow. you. No inmate ever picked me up in the air like that. No. Yeah. I got a guy in the audience did it. Wow. I ran into this guy three or four times after that. I said, hey, how you doing, buddy? I run, I walk back. <laughs> I get in my car, Dunkin' Donuts, I take off. Flashbacks. Like, That's crazy. This guy's nuts. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I've seen, like, in California, I've seen some oh, uh, yeah. old hecklers. My oh, God. Yeah. You can get them. You can get them. you gotta have. You got to have some lines where you can shut them down. You know what I mean? Right, right. If you're inexperienced and you're new, it's tough if you get a heckler. Because you're, you're nervous doing it a while, already. You're, gonna, you're already nervous. You don't need anybody heckling when you're exactly. at a new exactly. comic. But yeah. when you've been doing it a while, you should have some lines to kind of bust the guy up and hopefully tone him down, you know what I mean? Well, you, your, your style is you, you pick on the people in the audience. Yeah, I, I interact with the audience. Yeah, yeah you play yeah. with the people in the audience. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's like a lot of comics. I remember being on a cruise ship one time, and the, the guy, the, and we're always getting up, never getting near the stage. You know, so I'm way in the back, and I hear them talking about the, this guy and this, the, the comedian's pick. And they had a, a, a PG at 8 o'clock, rated R at 10 o'clock, oh, yeah. and rated X at midnight. And this was the rated X section. And he's destroying this guy in the front. So I stand up to look, and I recognize the guy. 
Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. And he's tearing them apart. The, 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 comedian, the comedian, he's sitting right in front of him, and the guy's got the uh, Italian uh, horn on, and he's, he's oh. all over him. He's just, you know, he's really picking on the poor guy. And when I ever stood up, and I realized he played in the band. He had been on this show. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, oh, and I'm going, I, I'm ducking down. I don't want no part of this. Yeah. He, was, he was picking him. I mean, people were moving from the, from the stage, moving their seats. They were getting out of their seats and yeah, going up. They stayed there, but they got in the back. They didn't want to be no part of him. Yeah. But he, he was on him. He stayed on this guy. Yeah, that's, you can't, For that's about too 10 much. minutes, he stayed yeah, on this guy. Much. It was a little, little yeah, much. If you see somebody who's a good sport, you can go back to him, but you don't, you don't want to stay. If a guy doesn't like it, you get away from him. You don't want, yeah. to, you don't want to stand somebody that long picking on. That's not good, you know? You, you've never had a, a situation where, because, you know, somebody a gets mad at you? A few times I can tell you? somebody's a little mad at so I, I just, I'll you know, just I sense off. it. I just get away. I get go to the right. next right, somebody right. else. I get a good sport, and then I go on him back and forth, maybe here or there, you know? But you, if you see somebody not liking it, you don't. You just, yeah. you got to learn, you got to get away from it. What, like you, you can't beat, a dead, you can't the, beat a, a dead horse. I mean, if it's not going to work, you got to get away from it. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. That's bad, you, that's bad, you know. When, you, when you're talking about people and you say to them, you look like so-and-so. and you, Yeah, yeah, you know, they usually kind of, laugh. You know, I do it in a good-natured way, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't try to be mean or anything, so they, you know. Yeah, you want a 275-pound two, guy on you? <laughs> oh, I got that bit, yeah. <laughs> It's funny though, the people that I brought to the pub on park last Sunday, yep. their wives were looking for tables. And my friend, who I hadn't seen in a long time, he, he came and he said, Oh, no, 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 we're not sitting in the front because that guy starts picking on people and he's going to pick on me. And I'm like, right. No, he's not going to pick on you. He and did. No. I, was, I wasn't in the show. No, he was. wasn't. Was, that was a contest. Yeah. yeah. But, but they do know. If this guy shows up, oh, yep. they don't want to be yeah, on the no, firing huh? line. Yep. Yeah, he's going to get you. He's yep. going to get you. <laughs> but like you said, it's not going to be hot. You're not going to yeah. be no. nasty yeah. to him. No. You're just going to play with him. Yeah, that's all. Just going to have fun with him a little that's bit. That's all. Before we, I got to tell you, Bob, you know, I don't know about people in the view right. I've been in therapy for quite a, quite a few years, Russ. And my therapist told me, because it was stressful during that pandemic, he said, if you've got any problem with any family members, just tell them I can't talk and walk away. I haven't seen my wife in six months. Well, it's really? <laughs> I just walked away, Bob. <laughs> I just wandered away. That's it. She's in Pawtucket and I'm in Situ. Well, well, that well, keeps it married. That's going. how you stay married, That's Bob. right. Live in right. different houses. I, I would have stayed married a long time if I could have done that. <laughs> you would have still been married. married. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's nice and easy. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go. Now, when you work a joke and you find it works for you, do you use it every show? Or you, you mix them up, or what do you yeah, do? Yeah, well, I got some set stuff that I use, like Russ, we get some set stuff we use, and, and then I may come up with something different with the audience, you know what I mean? Yep. I'll come up with a different different line, you know, and, I, and if it goes good, I remember it, yep. and I'll use it again, you know? You know, like you were talking about Amish. One night I looked in the crowd, there was a guy with a beard, and I come in my head, I just said, you look half Amish and half Italian. I said, <laughs> what, are you, I said what are you going, to eat meatballs in the dock? <laughs> it got a big laugh. That's it. So now I keep that. I, I, if I right. go to different venues, I'll, I see a guy with a beard, I use it, and it, and it works for me. So sure. I, I write from the stage. Some people could sit down with a piece of paper and write jokes. I'm not a writer. I, I improv. And I come up with he something. Writes Russ jokes. writes. I improv. I come up with something that works. I remember it. Right. My brain's like a computer. So I remember the lines. Oh, that worked, that worked, you know. You gotta remember stuff. You gotta, you know. But coming out of COVID, my mind was like mush. It was blank. Right. I got on stage. I did like eight minutes. I went blank. Wow. And then little by I don't know if I'm done here. And little by little, I, I kept getting on stage. I started getting my material back, and I started feeling more confident. But for a while there, I was wondering, because of COVID, am I am I all done here? A lot yeah. of comedians probably the same thing. You, you haven't performed in in a year and a half. That's a long sure. time. Yeah. It's a long time, you know. Well, they perform in front of families and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I always, no matter where the heck. Oh, you're matter. performing all the time. I, but I would always work the thing in there and just say, hey, this, you know, just do my act. He's comical. I had to. I just had, you know, it's it's funny. Yesterday I was at a my friend's house and they're waiting for a dishwasher to come from uh, one of the big stores, and. Um, so the guys come in, and these people just moved here, just moved back from uh, from down south. So the guy said, oh, they're dropping off a dishwasher and they're taking the old one. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm talking to them, and the guys come in, they take the old dishwasher, and the guy put a hose on the counter, and they walked out the door. So my friend said, 
Where's the dishwasher? I said, I don't know. I wasn't talking to him. They took off. No dishwasher. They didn't drop a dishwasher No, they didn't drop the dishwasher up. They just dropped the hose off. Well, that's a start. Well, these people are like in their 70s. So where's the dishwasher? So I finally went to the store, and I said, where's the dishwasher? They said, no, it said that they took it with them. I said, the guy's 75 years old. He did not walk out of here with a dishwasher. So I ended up, it was at a different store. I call and I just kept saying, manager, manager, store manager. Finally, I get the store manager on the right. phone. And I had to drive over to the other store. And I said, uh, and so the lady, this nice lady picked up the phone. And I said, listen, I'm on my way to your store. And I want the dishwasher. The truck didn't drop it off. These people need it. And she said, well, we'll have it delivered tomorrow. I said, listen, I am going to your store right now, and I'm going home with a dishwasher, and I don't care if it's <laughs> you, a bottle of Dawn, and a washcloth. One of the crews brothers They're getting a, get dishwasher. a dishwasher. He does it all. <laughs> well, because they were freaking out. Yep. And, um, and she said, you think I'm going to go there and wash dishes? I said, no, I think it's either going to be you or a real dishwasher. Either way, <laughs> one way or another, and they got their dishwasher. Really? But you know, yes. I just remembered that line. He's a good Samaritan, this guy. Yes. But you know something, you, the audience tells you what jokes are funny, right? Right. You hear the laughter. Once the laughter comes, you know that one stays. That one's saying. And that's how, you know, the problem is though, when you're going around with the same crowds, and you have the same jokes, right. That's where I made the mistake the first time when I kept changing them and I just... Yeah, you got to have some basic stuff you got to stick with. Well, they, they're expecting it anyway. They're expecting the same jokes. They are. Both, you know, it's like a singer. Some, mix in some new ones. You know? Yeah. Mix yeah. in some new ones. You can't do all new every time. Right. No, no. Right. Impossible. No, you couldn't remember them all. Right. I saw Jay Leno, I don't know how many times, within a one-year period. We were out in... Uh, we had just broken a $5 million sales um, level with Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruise Lines. Right. So they said, we're taking you on a special trip. And they took us, they flew us in a private air bus to Torku, Finland, to see one of the ships being built. I've been to Torku, Finland. I've been to that place. I've been to that. To the shipbuilding? Uh, yeah, in Torku, well, Finland. I've been there. Now we Jeez. went, oh, and then they took us to the Hyatt, the Hyatt at Ganey Ranch in Phoenix, and the sales manager for Royal Caribbean said, you're not gonna believe who the entertainment is. Now, I had just seen Leno at Foxwoods. Right. I had seen him somewhere else. And sure enough, here comes, the, here comes dinner, and here's Jay Leno. And Jay yep. Leno, he was hypnotized. Really? When he goes on stage, he's hypnotized. Yeah, I read about it in Playboy. Wow. But he came out, and I said, I said, wow, these are the same jokes. Of course they are, because he's Traveling all over the place. Right, he can't. He can't do all new jokes. Yeah, but he can't. stumbled once, and then he said, "Oh yeah," and he went right, right back in. And at the end of his set, he just walked off the stage. Well, speaking of stumbling, we got to wrap it up, guys. All right, oh, we're having a ball here. I know. Right. We got to have to do it again. Cruise Brothers on a couple of comedians. You got October tenth. October tenth. Pub on Park, September fifth. October tenth and December tenth. Or 12th, I don't know. I got a lot. You got to go on the website. Yeah, Bob. that's all. Comedy give it a website. Factory, ri .com. Comedy, Comedy Factory, ri .com. The phone number's there. The shows are there. All right. Come on, have a good time. You all right. Laugh. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Russell Fuso, Thank John Parada, and me. You just sent an all about folks.